Hey mama, welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode three. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. In last week's episode, we defined overwhelm and talked about what I see are the three major causes. So if you haven't listened to it yet, press pause, please go back and do that first, because knowing what overwhelms us is crucial to figuring out how to overcome it. Today, we are going to talk about the one thing you must do before you start the decluttering process. Any ideas on what it might be? Well, grab your notebook and pen because it's time to dive into today's episode. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home, calendar, and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Okay, Mama, so now we've been able to pinpoint some of the things that may be overwhelming you. Maybe it's all the stuff in your home, Maybe it's a calendar crammed with to-dos and obligations, or maybe it's the thoughts that are constantly distracting you from being able to move forward. Or maybe it's all three. But before we can move forward in any of these areas, we have to do one thing first. Define what truly matters to us. Not what matters to our parents, our partner, our kids, or other moms we see at the playground or on Instagram. What matters to us? Because here's the deal. If we know we're overwhelmed and we just decide to start running around our house like a mad woman with a garbage bag to plow through all the clutter, it probably isn't going to go very well. A friend of mine calls this rage decluttering, and it's something that you will likely regret. So knowing what matters to you is the lens by which we make all of our decluttering decisions. So today I am going to walk you through an exercise that you can start using to figure out what matters to you by using one universal example, laundry. So if you're taking notes and I hope that you are, I want you just to write at the top of your paper, laundry and underneath it, what matters to me? Question mark. So unless you live in a nudist colony, and if you do, Uh, welcome to the podcast. Um, You wear clothing, right? Your partner and your kids wear clothing. Maybe your dog wears clothing. It is fall here where I live, so it's going to get cooler soon. It's kind of a thing, right? And unfortunately, that clothing, it just keeps getting dirty every day, no matter what we do. So annoying. But it's something that's going to be in our lives for the rest of our lives. So what matters to us about laundry? Hmm, maybe you've never thought about that before. Let's start brainstorming some things that might matter. They could be things that you want or things that you don't want. For example, I don't want anyone in my family to have less than two clean pairs of underwear or socks in their drawer at any given time. Usually it's a lot more than that, but the worst thing is when your kid is about to go off to school and you can't find any clean underwear or socks, right? Here's a couple others. I don't want to do my laundry for hours on the weekends because that's when I want to spend time with my family. The second thing is I want clean sheets and towels, so I want mine cleaned once a week. Okay, that is something that is important to me. The third thing is I don't care if my kids' clothes are folded neatly in their drawers, but I do care that every type of clothing has a home and that clean clothing gets to that home. So for example, in my son's dressers, they have shorts in the bottom drawer, shirts in the middle drawer, underwear, and socks in the top drawer and pajamas. So that is something that's important to me, even if they're kind of haphazardly thrown in there, right? 
And the last thing is I don't want my family members to have so many clothes that I feel like I'm drowning in clothing all the time. So those are the things that are most important to me. Now yours may be very different. And if you're having trouble formulating these, think about what you're currently doing or not doing about your laundry right now and ask yourself whether you are happy with the status quo. So for example, do your kids put dirty clothes in a hamper or directly in the laundry room? Does your partner leave dirty clothes or like half dirty, whatever that means, <laughs> clothes strewn about the room or do they have a specific home? Would you rather do a week's worth of laundry in one day or break it up into smaller chunks? So for each of these types of things, keep asking yourself, does this matter to me or do I feel like I should be doing this? The shoulds get us every time, don't they? So when it comes to putting away laundry, do you feel like you should be doing all of these pretty Marie Kondo, Con Marie method folds, but you don't have time, so you just end up not putting away laundry at all? Do you feel like you should be the one putting away laundry because you do it best, but your kids are old enough to help and could actually take it off your plate? Once you have a list of what actually matters to you, I want you to pick the top one to two things on your list. So I gave you a list of about four things for me, and here are my top two. I don't want to do laundry for hours on the weekend, and I don't want to feel like I'm drowning in clothes. Those are my top two. So with these top two things guiding me, I have decided to do laundry and putting away yesterday's laundry and do that on a daily basis. And in the show notes, I'm going to link an Instagram post I did a while back about this very thing. Daily laundry may not be for everyone, but it keeps it manageable for me for a family of four. And I don't have to think about it because I've made it a habit and I do it at the same time every day. The second part, not wanting to drown in clothing, is why I have a limited wardrobe myself and I limit the wardrobe of my kids. So it may seem strange or counterintuitive, but less clothing in my experience means less laundry. So I'm constantly looking to see what I want to wear, what my kids want to wear, and then decluttering based upon that to keep our wardrobes minimal. An example of this that happened recently is that my kids were in a lot of camps and vacation Bible schools over the summer, and you get a t-shirt for every single vacation Bible school you go to, and usually for camp too. So they had all of these extra t-shirts in their drawer that they're really never wearing. So I asked them, hey, do you want to keep these? Do you actually want to wear them? And was able to declutter based upon talking to them about those extra t-shirts. So once you know what matters to you, you can develop a process for laundry and clothing by focusing on those things and always coming back to it. And as you look at the things that are overwhelming you, the things we talked about in episode two, you can figure out what matters to you about each of those things. And that is how we know how to declutter our homes, heads, and hearts by always holding it up to this lens of what truly matters. So to recap, we're going to take an area that's been a major source of overwhelm to you. We talked about laundry. Here's another example, a clean kitchen. Oh, wouldn't that be nice if it was like that all the time? (laughs) Too bad that never happens. For me, I want to have a clean kitchen before I go to sleep at night. But the question is, what does clean kitchen mean to me, right? When I think about what truly matters and then brainstorm some ideas, for me, it's having wiped down countertops and a sink free of dishes before I go to bed. For you, it might be more, it might be less. But what I want you to do is pick only the top one or two things so that you can focus on those first. That's the biggest pain point for you for whatever it might be meal planning, clean kitchens, laundry, etc. Just pick the one or two things that matter the most and do that first. So for me, I make sure that I remove surface clutter so I can actually clean the countertops and I minimize extra dishes so that I don't have sinks full of dishes all the time, right? 
Hopefully this makes sense, this resonates with you, and you can start working through some of the other areas of overwhelm using this same method. So if you're feeling stuck and need some extra help, you can book a free 30-minute discovery call with me so we can chat some more about it and the areas that are overwhelming you the most. Just go ahead and look at the show notes, and there's a section that says want to work with me, and you can find a slot in my calendar. Thank you so much. I look forward to talking to you next Thursday. Bye for now. Hey mama, thanks so much for joining me today on the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast. If you enjoy today's episode and learn something new, could you do me a big favor and screenshot today's episode and share it to your Instagram stories? You can tag me at Simple by Emmy. That's Simple by E M M Y. That way, more mamas just like you can find out about the podcast and we can all work together to declutter our homes, heads, and hearts. Thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.